Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today we will be finishing Juz 28 and the first half of 29. First half of 29 contains uh, the uh, beautiful surahs such as Surah Mulk, Surah Qalam, Surah Haqqa, Surah Ma'arij, <coughs> Surah Nuh. And inshallah, I'm hoping that majority of us know these surahs. Especially Surah Mulk. And these, these surahs are Makki Ayah. Makki means surahs which were revealed or Ayah which were revealed in Makkah. Not in Medina before Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated. Right? To Medina he was in Makkah. And that's where these surahs were revealed. Keeping in mind that it took 23 years for the Quran to be revealed. It could have been revealed right away. But it was revealed gradually for us to understand certain scenarios and certain uh, situations. Right, I will be revealed based on an incident that took place. So, uh, so the Makki surahs, they're very uh, profound. The ayah are much smaller than Madani surah. And the meaning is very profound. Like they'll have like four or five words. And the meaning is so uh, deep. You know, so stuff like this is very, it's much smaller. It's not like, a, like a, in Surah Baqarah, we had one ayah that was one page. <coughs> Literally. But now we have ayah that's like what? Two, three words. Before continuing about Surah Mulk, I want, uh, I want uh, everyone to memorize Surah Mulk for those who didn't. And for those who did, inshallah, all of us should have the intention to recite it before we go to sleep or at night time. The reason why is because there's a hadith. <coughs> Sayyiduna Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu says that whoever recites Surah Mulk every night, Allah will protect him from the punishment of the grave by virtue of this surah. In the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa we named this surah Al-Mani'ah, which means it prevents the punishment of the grave. It is such a surah that whoever recites that whoever recites it every night has certainly done a lot and has done good. Mentioned in Nasai, Tabrani, in Mu'ajam al-Kabir. And Hafiz Haythami rahimahullah has uh, made this authentic, right? This, this above narration that I just recited. He, made, he said it's authentic. Allama Suyuti has classified the above narration as Jayyid. Anyhow, so Surah Mulk. Right? We just said it protects one from the punishment of the grave. You know how badly we need this? Can you imagine that? You know, right after we pass away, that's when life actually starts. Right? That's when life actually starts. So, and no one's there. Your money doesn't help you. Your children, your mother, your relative. No one helps you there. It's a good deed that you take. So, what better benefit is there than reciting Surah Mulk? It literally takes 3-4 minutes to recite the whole Surah. We should go out of our way. Wallahi, you know, the punishment of the grave is very scary. It's a very scary moment. Our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us about it. About how scary it is. Right? A person, if he's a bad person, if he didn't do good deeds, the, the grave will be a, you know, حُفْرَةٌ مِنْ حُفْرَةٌ It will be like a pit from the pit of fire. Serpents, snakes, right? The grave itself will just... Uh, make his body very strict, uh, restricted. You know, it's a very scary place to be at that time when no one can help you. So Surah Mulk can definitely help us. Right. Uh, Sayyidina Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu reports that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, a surah of the Quran that consists of merely 30 verses will argue on behalf of one who recites it until he is admitted into Jannah. It is Surah Mulk. Hafiz Haythami rahimahullah has classified the above narration as authentic. Hafiz ibn Hajr rahimahullah has also declared the above narration authentic. So, it's, an, it's a surah, literally the surah, it will uh, benefit us. It will intercede for us. It will say that this servant of mine, a read Quran for me. Ya Allah, every single night he would read for me? You would want to punish this beloved slave of yours? You know, so it will intercede on behalf of us. This surah starts off, Tabarakalladhi biyadihi al-mulk. That glory be to Allah, be at the in whose hand Al Mulk is all power, all kingdomship. Who owns everything? Allah. Right now, He owns, and on the day of judgment, He still owns. Right now, we own a house, we own a car, we own people do real estate, they own many houses. 
But on the day of judgment, do they own anything? No, nope. that means they didn't really own it. Right? But Allah Ta'ala says, we'll say also on the day of judgment, Liman al yawm that does anyone have any kind of ownership today? Which day? The day of judgment. Is there anyone who can claim that he owns something now? All of this uh, power that we thought we had and all of this authority that we thought we had on this day, which is uh, in this dunya, we claim that this, my, this is my car, this is my house. But on the day of judgment, Allah is saying, who's there to say that they own anything? Liman <coughs> mulk And that's the saddest reality. Because, you know, all of us, we, we feel so happy and we act like we have so much uh, power within ourselves and so much control within ourselves is that, you know, I own this car. You don't really own this car, right? I own this house. I own this and that. We don't own anything because the moment we pass away, does that car go in the grave with us? Does that car help us? Does that money help us? Right? So that means we really don't own anything. Our siblings will be fighting, yeah, unfortunately. If the Muslim is on a good background, the, the Muslim are they're well grounded in the Islamic faith, then it's very easy for people to fight over the money. The moment this brother passes away, they're fighting over who's going to take the money, how much money is he going to take, what does he own, I, I deserve this car. He said that he's going to, all of these kind of stuff, that means you don't own anything. Allah Ta'ala, Tabarakullah Biyadihi Al Mulk, He owns everything. And he has control over every single thing. When he owns it, he has control over it because he owned it. He owned it from the beginning. He owns it till the end, and he's always owning it. We never we owned it in a certain time, but it got over. We don't have it no more. Yes. Allah Taala is the one who created death, wal haya, and life. He could have said he created life and death, but to remind us that we're gonna die, he created death. And he created life, right? Just to remind us that, listen, your objective in this life is not to live a long-term life and to enjoy and to forget about everything and just to relax. No, he's saying, look, he created death first. So remember it, you're going to die. Why? And he created life. Why? To test you. That's it. To see which person really loves Allah. Ayyukum ahsanu amala To see which person will really do good actions To see when a person is going through a trial and tribulation How will he react To see that this slave of mine really loved me When he claims that he loves me Right I will give some people the best of wealth The best of fame The best of uh, ownership Of houses or whatever And I will make some people poor I will make some people rich I will make some people healthy I will make some people unhealthy I will, I will put many different types of people in this world. But every single one of them can't complain that they can't call to me. Right? Every single person has that connection with Allah. Right? Just to call on to me, to remember me. It doesn't matter what scenario a person may be in. But let's see which person really loves me. Aziz is food. He is almighty and all merciful. I want to keep going but time is running out. But may Allah Ta'ala really make us understand the value of Surah Mulk. Because look how it starts, right? He's reminding us of death. He's reminding us that, you know, there's only one being, which is Allah. We can deny it. We can deny it. But the reality is a reality, right? A person can say that I don't believe in jinn. Allah is telling me there's a jinn here. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنْ Right? A person can say that I don't believe in Qiyama. Allah is telling us that Qiyama is coming. So people can act like they don't know, but the reality is a reality, right? If Allah said it, that's it. So if we know that this really exists, then we have to go out of our way to please that being who's telling us this, which is Allah. Allah Ta'ala is saying, remember death, so we must remember death. Allah Ta'ala is saying that He deserves to be praised, so we praise Him. Allah Ta'ala is saying He's the only one who can help us, then we go to Him. May Allah Ta'ala make us understand the reality of this world that this world is nothing. May Allah Ta'ala make us benefit in these last few remaining nights.